Hello and welcome to The Great Yancey. I'm here with Kellen today. Hello. This is her last day here with us, which is really sad, but we are going to spend three weeks in Europe together very yeah. soon. So, <laughs> and we got like all of our plans made and all of our tickets bought yeah. and it's so exciting. Uh, but that's not what we're talking about today. <laughs> we're going to talk about a subject which Kellen knows a lot about and which I'm just starting to learn a little bit about and probably will next fall once I get this to the audiobooks again. <laughs> seems to be the only way I can yeah. read these days. Um, and that is Dorothy Sayers. Uh, would you say Dorothy Sayers is your favorite author? Or? One of my favorites. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And so you are in your senior year at college, and you're an English major, and you just wrote your capstone paper on... On Gaudy Night by mm -hmm. Dorothy Sayers. Mm -hmm. Just, if you were to start, <laughs> who is Dorothy Sayers and what are her, her books, the Lord Peter Whimsey yes. series in particular? Okay, so Dorothy Sayers was a writer who was born in the 1890s and wrote from, she wrote her mysteries from the 20s through the 30s. She did some other writing after that. But she was a contemporary of Agatha Christie. She actually was a friend of Agatha Christie's and wrote 11 books featuring her detective character, Lord Peter Whimsey, who is an aristocratic amateur detective and a really fun character. And several of the books also feature Harriet Vane, who is herself a mystery writer and is also a very fun character. So the first book you recommend that I you recommended mm -hmm. to me to read was Strong Poison, which I did listen to <laughs> on audiobook at work. And mm -hmm. I really enjoyed that book a lot. Like I wasn't quite sure at first because like I started reading one of them before mm -hmm. and like I liked it but it was kind of I got distracted. I'm easily distracted yeah. with books. <laughs> um, but um, I love the audiobook especially because uh, the guy narrating it, I forget what his name is. Ian Carmichael. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he just was so, his his yeah. accent and just how he read it was so great because um, dialogue seems to be a big thing yes. in her books. Yes. And it's just very, felt very British to me and it just made me laugh a lot mm -hmm. even though it was a murder mystery. <laughs> if you had to choose a favorite Dorothy Sayers book, or Lord Peter Whimsey mystery? I think I would have to say Gaudy Night because to be able to write a 30 page paper on a book you have to be pretty <laughs> invested in it. Yeah, and you also talked about it for two hours, right? Yes. <laughs> pretty sure Prairie could do that about BTS right now, but <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that would be get any. I don't know. It doesn't seem scholarly. Well, no, Dorothy Sayers probably. is scholarly. <laughs> what are your favorite, like I mentioned I really liked the dialogue was one thing I really liked in that book. What are your, some of your favorite elements in Dorothy Sayers? One of my favorite elements definitely is the character development mm -hmm. because in the mystery novels of the time the emphasis was much more on the plot because the readers were more interested in the whodunit than in the characters who were solving the mystery. Mm -hmm. And Dorothy Sayers was the kind of person who didn't do anything halfway. And so when she came along and started writing these, she really was one of the first people to actually have realistic characters in her mystery novels. And she also develops them quite a bit. Lord Peter matures quite a bit through the series. He gets a lot more serious. Harriet also has a lot of character development as well. And even some of the more minor characters, minor reoccurring characters, also have development. And so that is by far one of my favorite things. Even in the one book I read, I did notice the characters were very interesting mm -hmm. and compelling. And so one of my favorite parts in Strong Poison, <laughs> there's this one character, what's her name, Miss Clemson? Miss Clemson. Uh-huh. Yes. And she, yeah, she's just hilarious. Mm -hmm. She goes and um, is trying to get some information for Lord Peter. And she seems like a very, I don't know, upstanding person. Like a very proper yes. older British yes. lady, yes. But she, uh, in order to get this information, pretends to be a uh, psychic mm -hmm. and like just sets up all these elaborate plans to convince the lady she's trying to mm -hmm. get to tell her stuff that she's psychic and it was, yeah. it's so funny and she's got like three or four chapters and then she writes letters mm -hmm. to Lord Peter on her progress. And it's it's great. I really yes. enjoyed that part of the book. <laughs> Lord Peter and Harriet have a very fun dynamic as well mm -hmm. in their relationship. That was another thing yes. I thought was very funny in Strong Poison because I know they're a 
a ship, I guess. Yes. <laughs> um, but so I'm, I'm listening to it, and I'm like, oh, so he's going, he's meeting Harriet Bain in prison, and by the time he leaves, he asks her to marry him. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> and she says, oh, not another one, because she's received like 40 some proposals of marriage since. in the mail. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so it's really funny to watch him in his yeah. way just ask her to marry him, and she say no. <laughs> and that keeps happening. <laughs> Yeah, because I've just yes. just barely started the next one you told me to read, Half His Carcass, mm -hmm. and he's already asked her like three times. <laughs> and I think I counted like one it. time and he proposes seven or eight times <laughs> in Half His Carcass one. <laughs> so the beginning of that book, I'm really enjoying it. I'm, I'm not not reading it because I don't like it. I'm not reading it because Prairie's got me consuming PS <laughs> and other, other things. I'm just easily distracted when it comes to books. I can't see stuff. <laughs> How did you first learn about Dorothy Sayers? How did she? Because I know you've yes. been a fan as long as I've known you, yes. I'm sure. And how did yeah. that get started? So my mom read a lot of British mysteries when I was growing up. And so I kind of had an awareness of Lord Peter, but I didn't really know anything beyond that. And there was one point, there's a 1980s BBC miniseries of three of the books that my mom had. And I remember one day she was watching Gaudy Night again, and I don't know why, and I walked into the room and just caught this one scene, and I thought, this is not what I was expecting it to be. This actually looks really interesting. <laughs> and that same year, one of our local theaters put on a stage production of Gaudy Night, and I talked my mom into getting us tickets to go see that, and I was on the edge of my seat the entire time. I laughed, I cried, <laughs> I was incredibly invested. And so after that, I went home and binged watched the entire miniseries. And then for Christmas that year, I got all of the books as a Christmas present and then spent the next several months binge reading all 11 books. Mm -hmm. And the rest is history. <laughs> I feel like I've heard of them. I've heard of them because I feel like they're more mm -hmm. popular in homeschooling yes. circles. And yes. so I feel like I heard about them growing up and mm -hmm. um, I just never read any until you. <laughs> um, and then again, I should have read them a long time ago, but me and books have a complicated relationship. <laughs> I did read Agatha Christie. I got into that mm -hmm. mostly with And Then There Were None. Mm -hmm. That was the primary yes. one that I found at the thrift store and I was like, oh, this is so weird. Uh, not so weird, so different. Good. Different. Yeah. Uh huh. Disturbing and yes. <laughs> interesting. I I'm hoping to read more of the Dorothy Sayers mm -hmm. because they're such fascinating characters and characters are very mm -hmm. important to me. Yeah. As I've, I've said in other other videos, one in particular, I like things that make me feel things <laughs> and I, I felt some things. I haven't felt like a lot of emotions yet. I haven't cried. I've laughed a lot. Um, it'll, it'll get emotional. Okay, okay. I'll, I'll believe you and I'll keep going. <laughs> so what made you decide to write your capstone paper? Because like a capstone yeah. paper, that's a Big thing, it was a big commitment, yes. Mm -hmm. So last summer I started thinking of some ideas of what I wanted to do and I had some ideas but I wasn't really sure what I wanted to settle on. And part of it is that there does need to be a lot of scholarly research that you can find and you can interact with. <laughs> so that kind of knocks some things off. For a while I wanted to do a G.K. Chesterton novel but I couldn't find anything on it and I didn't want to do that to myself. Yeah. And and I'd kind of been thinking about God and I on the back burner, but for some reason I thought, no, I don't want to do that. And then it kind of got to the point when I thought, wait, why, why not? And so I ended up settling on that. My professor approved it. My professor's wife actually, God and I is her favorite book, so no pressure there. <laughs> but I ended up really enjoying it. I wouldn't have rather spent six months of my life on anything else. I learned a lot. It was a great experience. So you had your capstone mm -hmm. paper, which was 30 pages long? Yes. I still haven't read that. I should probably read Gaudi Night. Yes, yeah. it will not make any sense. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then you also presented or taught mm -hmm. about it for two hours. Yes, part of the class was we had we were in charge of an entire class period of the capstone class, mm -hmm. and we had to lecture for at least fifty minutes, and then lead a group discussion time for at least fifty minutes. That was not mm -hmm. in my comfort zone at all. I made it. That was a learning experience. Mm -hmm. But at least you had Dorothy Sayers to talk about. Yes. So. <laughs> so you've read all the books. Have you reread them? I'm guessing you've reread at least Gaudy Night a lot. <laughs> I there are a few that I haven't reread yet, but most of them I have. Harriet mm -hmm. Vane is not in all the books. Correct. She's introduced in Strong Poison. Yes. What like number chronologically is that? Do you know? 
I think it's five. Okay. And there's 11 of them? Yes. Mm -hmm. So then she's also in Half His Carcass, Goddy Night, Night, and Best Men's Honeymoon. Okay. And then a few short stories that are set after Best Men's Honeymoon. Okay. Are there any other fun facts you know about um, Peter Whimsy or, or the books that you'd like to share with the vlog? <laughs> So Dorothy Sayers had an interesting relationship, author character relationship with Lord Peter. Mm -hmm. She invented him mostly because she needed money and she knew that writing mysteries would be a good way to earn money. Relatable. <laughs> about the time she was getting too strong poison in the book, she was about ready to move on. She wanted to be done and she couldn't really figure out how she wanted to get rid of Lord Peter because she knew that if she killed him off, she would have a Reckenbach Fall mm -hmm. scenario on her hands which she didn't want to deal with. And so she thought, here's an idea, I'll marry him off instead. <laughs> and so she introduces Harriet Vane specifically for the purpose of marrying off Lord Peter in Strong Poison. And then writes herself into a corner because their characters are too realistic. Mm -hmm. And so she has to write five more books before she can actually marry them off. <laughs> That's hilarious. And she actually started writing a play with one of her friends because Best Friends Honeymoon was actually a play first before it was a book. Mm -hmm. And she started writing the script for that while she was writing Gaudy Night. And she actually wrote a letter to one of her friends saying, yes, I'm trying to actually like get them engaged so that they can be married but they're not cooperating. <laughs> it's funny, I can also understand yes. the characters don't always do what you want them to do. But reading her letters that she wrote about her characters is pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, my camera card is having issues and we've got like one more minute before mm -hmm. it's gonna shut off on us. <laughs> so uh, thank you for watching, mm -hmm. like and subscribe, watch our Comic Con video because we went on Saturday yes. and had a lot of fun and I loved putting that video together. <laughs> and um, we're not gonna be seeing Kellen for a little bit, yeah. but then you'll be seeing a lot of her <laughs> when we're in Europe together yes. next month, which is gonna be Yay. awesome. We get to see all the cool stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, so one more time, thanks for watching, and we will see you later. Bye! Yes. <laughs> Yanzi says goodbye too. It's his channel, he's the true star. <laughs> Let go of me. <laughs> <laughs> that tail flick. <laughs>